the podcast. Well, it's proven to be quite an interesting end to the season because the final score at Ashton Gate last night against Blackburn Rovers, it was City, five-star City, five, Blackburn Rovers, uh, nil. Uh, they were pretty appalling, but that doesn't alter the fact that you still have to put the ball in the back of the net and City did that with a plum. That was their first 5 nil win against the thrashing against uh, Hull two years ago, last game of the season there. And it means we've now kept five clean sheets in the last six games. Yep. And we're number two in the form table. If you're going to be critical, you could say too little, too late. But I tweeted out last night on the final whistle. I think we're going to miss out on the playoffs by between five and seven points. And it will just show that that post-Christmas uh, form, when we were maybe sidetracked by the cup, um, that's going to cost us dear. But uh, nothing to complain about at all. A good all-round team performance, and we'll talk about individual players, I'm sure, as we go through the match action. I'm joined by uh, Neil with me here in person and uh, on uh, on the online, Mark and um, Ian. Um, guys, I'll come to you <laughs> first, Ian, and as I said, got plenty to talk about, so keep it at 30 seconds. Thoughts at quarter to 10 last night? Three points, clean sheet, front foot attacking football exactly what it says on the tin um for that to happen for a 5-0 win to happen one team has to be pretty good and the other team has to be poor that's just the way that large defeats come along so i'm delighted with it five clean sheets in the last six if we uh maintained our form and i'm not suggesting we can for a minute but if we maintained our form over the last six games for the entire season, we'd get 100 points and go up automatically. So it just goes to show that you don't have to win every single week. Um, to uh, that, that's we're the second place team, only on goal difference to Norwich at the moment in the current form table. So played six, won four, drew one, lost one, four eight against two. So um, delighted with that. Delighted for everybody down there. It's obviously put in a great deal of hard work. And in the case I forget to mention it, still with three centre halves out injured and six players out injured in total, which seems to be the norm. Okay. Neil, your thoughts? Well, I was bemused after that game. I have to admit, walking away last night, sometimes you feel, you know, completely enthused. What a game and all the rest of it. I didn't get that last night. Were we good? Uh, I've seen us play better. I don't think we had to play that well last night because Blackburn just pressed the self-destruct button. And the last four games, I had a look just before when the game was playing out, they drew nil-nil against Southampton. They drew nil-nil against Middlesbrough. They only lost by one nil to Ipswich and beat Sunderland 5-1. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I watched the team kind of self-destruct on the field last night. And Dominic Hyam... <laughs> I can't believe I've seen a performance like that from a centre back, and he kept him on at half time and took off the other one, Wharton. Yeah. So, okay. But we took our chances, and it was enjoyable. It was nice to see Conway get a couple and um, Naki to get a couple. Yeah, no, that's true. Mark, your thoughts? I heard you on Radio Bristol, the uh, waxing lyrical in a positive vein. Yeah, it it was City were clinical, but. Like Neil said, we played well in short bursts. We have a lot more control in the first half where, I mean, Blackburn was suicidal in possession and defending. I mean, Dominic Hyam, he's supposed to be, apparently he's a Scottish international or is a Scottish international, according to uh, according to Wikipedia. And also, um, Carl McFadden, when he came on, was equally as bad. But, I mean, Kayyem had, uh, you know, he, he was responsible for three, for three of the five goals. City were clinical. This, for the first half of the second half, we weren't in control at all, but the substitutions made a huge difference. The ball stuck in the final third, and then we just finished them off. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the third, fourth, and fifth goals were, were brilliant. So still a little bit of work to be done in midfield. I think Scott Twine tired. Williams was outstanding. Roberts again showed his passing range. You know, great um, left left cent left sided centre back in a free, or I think he could play. He could play left back. I think he could play left wing wing back. He could play in a lot of roles, but good passing range, good defending. I mean, Max could have worn an overcoat last night. He wasn't going to yeah. get troubled. They only had one shot from Smodix. I mean, he wouldn't know he was there. 
Um, mm. But yeah, it was a strange game. But City were clinical in bursts and five nil. <laughs> Yeah. Plus four goal difference now as well. I know five, that really... five clean, fourth best defense in the league as well. Still no. five, five better than Sunderland. I mean, yeah. the only teams above us: Leicester, Leeds, West Brom. Not a bad list to be in, is it? No, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Ian, uh, the, the 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 injury play continues. Um, what, what's what's the situation on? Because I'm looking at the the squad and the bench was strong enough to appoint James Cornick, King, Mametti, Wells. And it gets a bit weak with Bajic, Knight, the Bell, and Mabude. They all got a game pretty much, except Bajic and uh, Mabude. But what's the situation with Taylor Garner Hickman, Ian? Because is he is he out for an indefinite period? He's not, he's not out for the season. He had a um, a tight calf, um, and that I think is uh, firstly you have to remember at the moment the season's effectively over, and we don't have to risk any player that. You don't want him going on there and tearing his bloody calf this this time. So I think unless he's a hundred percent right, you won't see him. You won't see him back. But my understanding is it's not serious. The same as Rob Dickey. It's not serious. But I don't think you'll see either of them against Huddersfield. But the following game is going to be probably our, our toughest one on the running, and that's away to Norwich. Yeah. Um, but if we get the ball in behind. Their centre backs because Norwich are very good coming forward and they thoroughly deserve to beat Ipswich the other week. I watched the whole game, and but what I will say is Milk can turn quicker than their centre backs. So if we can get the ball in behind them and down the channels, uh, as per Campring's ball uh, into Tommy for the first goal, then I think we've got a uh, we've got a decent chance and it should be we should be quite relaxed and it should be a really good game of football any pressure will be on Norwich but no the three players that are out to the end of the you won't see before the end of the season are Atkinson Bell and Naismith um Eamon should be playing an under 21 game uh again perhaps perhaps 60 minutes of it this time instead of 45 uh Taylor Gardnickman and Rob Dickey have got the um uh, tight calves or slight calf injury, but not tears. Mm. Okay, Neil, the the lineup. Um, Robert, to me, Ian. Uh, but sorry, somebody on the text feed has said, uh, you know, he's he's proven to be a bit of a find. Uh, probably why we signed him last summer. But you know, that back three of Tanner, Viner, and uh, Roberts, they mm. they look pretty sound, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, defense defensively last night. I mean, they put Gallagher up against uh, Roberts and, and Viner. Obviously, massive height difference mm. there. And uh, with Dickey not being there, they must have thought, OK, we'll get Gallagher in there. And he did try and sort of bully uh, Roberts and Viner throughout the game. And he was a big physical presence down the centre. But other than that, I think when they're on the, when they're on the ground, he's, he's got a piece about him, Roberts, mm. hasn't he? You know, he obviously rates himself as a footballer. We saw that when uh, when he was saying, oh, I might have to go out on loan. He rates himself. He thinks of himself as yeah. a premiership footballer. Yeah. He thinks of himself as somebody who should be playing. And when he's not playing, well, yeah. Um, well you want that attitude then, and don't he's, you? he's kind of got that on the field a little bit, mm. really. Some At times, a few months ago, he would be a little bit complacent at times and mm. lose the ball a bit at times and all the rest of it. But he's got that air about him that actually, you know, I can do everything at my own pace and all the rest yeah. of it. And in a three, I think that can work at the back. I'm not so sure about him in a, in a two. No. Uh, which is what we found, obviously, at Sunderland. But in a, in a three, he had a solid game last It works time. well. Yeah. Mark, uh, the shake-up in midfield of sorts, and instead of it being Knight and James, it was Williams uh, and uh, Knight. Uh, I thought Joe Williams put in... A very very good performance last night. Uh, he's out of contract in the summer. He brings more energy to that role than Matty James, who's also out of contract. Based on last night, who would you be if might not say either of them because we got Max Bird to come in there. Uh, but based on last night, who would uh, you be trying to keep at Ashton Gate next season, Williams or James? I'd like to keep both of them ideally because I think you need the experience with James great in front of a defence and can pass the ball, can add the odd goal. 
Joe Williams. I mean, he's there to break up the play and, and, and free up Knight a little, you know, so that they, they could pivot. He's there to protect the defence. They did that really well last night, especially in the first half in, in, in the press. So I keep both of them on, but it just comes down to it just comes down to money. Um, they'll be offered probably lesser de- lesser deals than they came in. Um, both of them three years ago, uh, especially with James. James will probably want two years. Are the club likely to offer that? I'd say no. Um, my my cousin actually told me that there was uh, a story in the Lancashire Evening Telegraph. Uh, last Saturday about Preston uh, uh, being interested in signing him. I I didn't know he had he, he had played for Preston previously. It must have been many years ago. Um, so yeah, I think James they'll, they'll want to retain both both players. Uh, apparently, talk not started yet. They they will do now. Just comes down to money, and I think with James, whether he gets whether he accepts a one year one year deal. And the money, so we'll just have to wait and see. But mm-hmm. I mean, be interested next season because, of course, you've got Max Bird coming into midfield, and of course, he played with Roberts before as well as Knight at Derby because Roberts was on loan there last season. So that would yeah. be an interesting, uh, you know, an interesting yeah. development, wouldn't it? Okay, Ian, I'm coming to you next. Uh, anyway, uh, the point you were about to raise before I asked you the next question, but go on far away. Yeah. Well, it, what it depends on is who we can afford to bring in plus Max Bird. We know Max Bird's coming in. We know we've got him. Um, uh, but it, it depends. It's all right people saying, well, you know, you could let Matty James move on or you could let Joe Williams move on. If you do, they have to be replaced. And it's not sufficient to say, well, we, we you know, we signed Adam Murphy. We got Josh Stokes coming in. They're very much players for the future and we'll see how they do. Um, but it, 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 if we haven't got money to invest unless we sell and we don't sell, then we'll need to keep hold of both of them, in, in my opinion. Uh, Mark's quite right what he says about the money and the contracts. They won't be offered as much as they were last time. Um, and uh, it, it's it'll be interesting to see. And I suppose, apparently, I understand both players want to stay. Um, but they're professionals. So if they can earn a lot more money somewhere else, particularly if it's closer to home, then they might decide to do it. But um, I, I, I think that contract talks are um, ongoing. Nothing new on Tommy. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll just have to see. It, it's, a, it's something that's going to make the summer very interesting. Uh, but it, it, but the funding from the board will determine what we can and can't do. Wow. And, and I think that's why I, I'm, I've been nagging the board to, to either come on here or get on Radio Bristol and explain what's going on. Now, I don't think they'll do it while they're trying to flog season tickets, but in a way they should, because then it's their job to manage the fans' expectations. Mm. And you can only see by some of the stuff, comments we've got on here um and some of the comments i've read on social media that people are more hopeful now we we know that will change in the space of a couple of defeats so i I never take too much notice of that because people blow hot and they blow cold especially the moloccans but i i think we're um it, it really depends on them to set the tone if they say well they don't need to come out and say we're spending a quintillion we're going for it but if they come out and say well we'd probably be able to do what we did last summer and add a couple of players um, without moving anybody out. We don't need to sell. But I think that would settle a lot of people down. Well, if they put in more performances like they did last night between now and the end of the season, and I said on the last poll, we want five-star performances, and you said uh, yeah, we've got no right to expect anything, but we did it last night. And uh, let's see if City can well, do that. That's end. exactly it, Dave. But yeah. what I also said is we will be, we are injury-prone, and we are inconsistent and that will continue. And if you look at the last two performances, that's borne out to be absolutely 100% true, isn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah, bear in mind, true. this Neil cited Blackburn's results before they got here. Now, it may just have been that, as I said, we, we played well and, and, and they didn't. But that's mm-hmm. happened to us plenty of times and that's why... We are where we are in Blackburn. There's three points off the relegation zone. Yeah. With the Vinkies having lost since taking over Blackburn, £327 million. 
Yeah. Good for that. There's money in there. Neil, Neil, Ian says about players getting, and we're talking here about Williams and James mm. in particular, players getting a better deal. It's a totally different football climate or financial climate now compared to when those contracts were handed out. And you can't say a top half championship side giving either of those a better contract than us because they'll be looking for better players. And therefore, if you look at bottom half championship sides, right, our wages, even our reduced wages, we're probably going to be top of the bottom half of that division in wages anyway. So we should, it's within our gift to make them stay. Although, as Ian says, both of them come from the north, want to return north. That's probably going to be the bigger pool, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I think the um, my view on it is that you're going to have to break a few eggs in the squad this to actually create the room in the squad. Because ultimately, if you look at our midfield uh, options at the moment, yeah, we're going through some really good form at the moment. We're playing well at the moment. But we all remember those conversations we were having a couple of months ago. And realistically, what, what are we now? 40, 49 goals for the season? 49 yeah. goals for the season? Still not yeah, enough. Yeah, 49. So, still not enough. So, for me, you've got to create room in the squad mm. to bring new players in. Mm. Okay. Uh, and, and James and Williams, James in particular, has been a really good signing. Yeah. It's, it's, no, it's, it's tidied us over that, diff, that, that difficult period. But for me, I wouldn't be re-signing them. I okay. think you've got to create scope for younger players to come into the squad and to make a difference and to be starting players. If you if you employ Williams and James, they're, they're either holding a place for holding up somebody else. To well, the thing is, you've got to, or, or you've got to bring in better than what you've what you've got well, and better than what we've got yeah. does cost. That's, that's the Dave. That's the key. Sorry to interrupt. That's the key factor. Better. Yeah. Right. Better. If you're going to bring in a bloke who's who's about the same age and about the same, t why bother? Because yeah. all you you might bring in a bloke who don't get on with anybody and he, he winds the rest of the squad up. Yeah. So, so it's, a, it's, like, a it's that better thing, and that's that's you know, can we? I'll be a member of the Can Can Club here. Can we? Bring it, bring in better. Can we? Will better, can we have better, the budget? It's not a case of can we. Better is a case of will they, which means spending money. As you said, go to Let me bring Mark yeah. in now. Mark, um, and, and we're going to get into the action, obviously. Uh, yesterday, first 20 minutes or so, well, the first 15 minutes, we looked pretty good. We restricted them to a couple of pot shots. As somebody said with our first goal, it came, came against the run of play, which I thought was a bit strange. We started well. And I thought I saw for the first time glimpses of what Scott Twine can bring to the club. But that was for the first half hour. He disappeared after that and it was one of the three players taken off. We're talking about bringing in better than what we got. There were elements of his play that, play that did remind me a little bit of Alex Scott. Yeah, and he looked he looked good. He spoke very well on the uh, pre-match presser as well. Um, you know, Burnley obviously going to come down. You know, he's the sort of player that they might want to keep. But if he comes here, would you, based on everything you've seen so far, make him a marquee signing at a four million quid that they would probably want for him? Um, well, he's he's not the marquee signing we signed because that was destroyed by his, by his quad injury and missing seven weeks mm -hmm. of football. So to some extent, he's still playing his, himself into fitness. So he's not really as sharp as we want him to be. But in flashes, he's shown what he can do. Uh, intelligent, picks the ball up in the hole and makes things happen. That link player we are really looking for, who plays behind the front man, who will give the ball to Tommy or make things make things happen. You know, play the ball to the, to the wingers, make uh, play the ball through the lines. So that's good. But I just think he's, he faded in the game last night and that's why he was substituted. But he didn't stop trying. He also made some tackles as well. So he doesn't uh, he doesn't shirk those responsibilities because you you defend from the front. You don't just def you don't don't defend from the back. Defend from the front. Make it as difficult for teams to play out. So it's a difficult one because we haven't seen the best of him because uh, of his injuries. So we're yet to be convinced there. But I think Liam Manning wants to keep him for continuity. And I think if the offer is right, uh, you know, for uh, for Burnley. We'll sign him because I think there is a we'll we will see a better player next season. 
but it's a bit of a difficult one because he's lost those uh, seven weeks to the quad injury and um, that's that's affected him. But, you know, you could convince fans, oh, it's a waste of money. But I think if we if we made a, two, you know, I think a two, maybe two and a half million offer, I think Burnley might accept that. Would the club want to? You just, it's it's a don't know. But mm. I think Liam Manning will want to keep him. OK, Ian, I'll come to you on this as well. We will get into going through the goals. Ian, you know, Liam Manning wants to keep him. Two and a half million, I don't think he'll get him. Then you've got wages that would make him probably the highest paid player at the club. Um, and yet, a moment ago, we were talking about better. Yeah, there's lots of things to play there. But what's your view on Twine at the moment, Ian? I, well, I like him. And it, it's... Is it a coincidence that when he started a game, we, we've we never lost? Mm -hmm. um, so it, sometimes, I mean, Mamete benefited from all the work that Twine had done when he was on the field. So he comes on, he's fresh as a daisy. Um, th their players are looking tired. They made four changes at half time, so they couldn't reinforce it and bring, well, they could have brought on one more, I think, and, and brought on, uh, a fresh player. They probably didn't have anybody left who was going to particularly change the game on their bench. Um, so, yes, I would like to <coughs> sign him on, on what I've seen, not only here, but what I saw at Hull. Um, because I think you've got to look at what he's done in the championship. What he did at Newport or MK Dons or anywhere like that is, is, is by the by, really. But yeah. it shows... He's got that ability. But once again, that's why I say it all really comes back to money. In terms of wages, he's not on massive wages at Burnley because they signed him from MK Dons and they got him quite cheap uh, in, in in the terms of what they're paying. Uh, and then it depends who Burnley have got in their team um, that they can hang on to uh, they, when they come down. So they could have, they've got quite, he's got quite a, a few there on loan. So they can all go back. That gets rid of uh, some of them. Are, one of them, I think, is from Chelsea. So they 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 won't be on buttons. So uh, it, it, there's it's like you say, it's up in the air. But if we want to improve, we have to sign better players than what we got. And the, the the other thing to look at is squad strength. You know, when when we we are fully fit, which we never are, but it fully fit and on form, we've got a top. I think a top ten squad. But with all the injuries all the time, particularly when they come in clusters, and it always seems to be the central midfield players or the central defenders. So th that is something that w we need to address. Um, and, and we need to, we really do, if we, we can't stop the injuries, and I don't think we can, and I'm, I've been looking around at other clubs, and you hear at Newcastle about it. Man United have, haven't got a left-sided defender left in the club, and that's Man United. They're all injured. So, so this thing, this thing about injuries, Eddie, and I think it's something that's increasing in the game. And whether that's yes, increase, yeah, and it's, it's a real increase. problem. And the only way you get around it is by having a bigger squad, and then that is obviously going to put the wage bill up, unless you get real lucky and bring in a load of good young kids at once. And th that's not, it'd be beautiful if it happened, but it's not likely, is it? Um, okay. So we, we need to be, and I'm not talking about 10 more outfield players, I'm talking about four more, probably. Yeah. Well, I would, say, I think, three. I think we I would need, say three. I would say I think three. we that's need 20, 28 outfield players. That's two for each position, plus six. And at any one time, if you've got six injured, that means you're left with two for every position. We which seem as though we've got some good youngsters on there. I mean, jumping forward, it was really good to see. Oh, yeah, the under 18. Jamie yeah. Knight Lavelle. Yeah. Jamie Knight Lavelle get 10 minutes. Let's get into the action. Neil, come to you for the first goal, uh, which, you know, I mean, he, he, he loves that patch of turf on that left hand side in front of Dolman. I mean, he was not dissimilar to the position he took when he scored against uh, West Ham or the run. Um, but he likes running off the shoulder of that last defender, but what a car horse Hyams was. And, you know, stubbed his clearance and yeah. finished with a plum by Tommy, wasn't it? I was really happy for Tommy last night. When he mm. went through, how many one-on-ones during the season has Tommy missed? Mm. And he took that exceptionally well. Fair play to him last, last night in that regard. I think our press last night, I mean, we are one of the better teams in the division with the press, full stop. But 
Blackburn seemed to go onto that pitch and seemed surprised at our press, mm. as in like they had no idea that we were actually going to implement something that we generally do very well, particularly at home. Mm. Um, and they, we just exerted pressure on them throughout the game because it wasn't just Hyam mm. with that back pass. There was the left back with the back pass for the Tommy one-on-one yep. a bit later on as well. So there were multiple players in Blackburn's back four, yep. which is why they went to a five at half time, that actually were just completely bedazzled by our by our press that's last a, that's night. A strong word, bedazzled. Bedazzled by by our press last night. And I was like, have you not seen us play? Yeah, are you not? If it, and this is against about, uh, we were up against a master tactician, yeah. John Eustace, whose oh. last visit to Ashton Gate when he brought yeah. his Birmingham City side there at the start of the season, and they played us off the pitch. So that that was all about pressure and what Tommy does very very very, very well because he must do well because Christ, how many how many goals have we seen of a similar ilk like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. This season with Tommy just putting that that last player under pressure with a miss hit pass, West Ham being a good case in yeah. point. The um, but uh, yeah, really nicely uh, taken because that's the type of type of goal he's through keeper saves, mm. and we all go, oh Tommy, another yeah. one missed. But he didn't. But he, he didn't. didn't. He, but didn't. he didn't. And Mark, eight minutes later, it's two nil. Um, Hyams. That was well. The referee. It was almost as though I was saying to uh, the, the, my friend Richard, who was with me last night. It was almost as though he was on. We were doing VAR in through the back door. Because, my goodness, he looked very long and hard at Mark Sykes, that foul on Sykes, didn't he, before pointing to the spot. I mean, I haven't seen the replays of it yet, but clear penalty in your view, Mark? Oh, yeah. I mean, Hyam, Hyam knew as soon as he did it. And both and both those goals came from great great passes uh, behind the defence from Cam Pring. I mean, he was closed down for the first one that he put behind Hyam. And Hyam did a Mavropanos, like uh, West Ham, uh, pressed by Tommy. In the near post, and then it, the second one was around Cannon Britain, uh, who previously played for Barnsley. You might remember him. He uh, he had the headband. He, I think he was trying to be a, like a Swedish tennis player from the nineteen seventies. So uh, Sykes is behind him, and and Heim comes across, sticks a leg across. Yeah, and it, the referee is like you know trying to remember. Hang on a minute, was it? Yeah, it was a penalty. Yes. <laughs> He points to the spot because Sykes. You watched it. You watched the, the video, and Sykes is looking at him. He's going. Yeah, oh, very, very there's quickly, a pause. There's a pause. Yeah, there's a pause. Very quickly, Mark. Do, do you, Sykes has got a massive reputation with refs, hasn't he? I, what, I going think, down? Possibly yeah, going down too easily. And I think the ref was like, he looked. Oh, it's Mark Sykes. I just yeah. need to you, pause. Are you, are Mark you, Sykes. Kick, are you fibbing me, Mark Sykes? Did you dive? Are you doing yeah. a sack on or, me? Or according to, or according to Sky, Tommy Conway got brought down for the penalty. Oh yeah, yeah. they do look alike. Well, yeah. yeah, well, they, I mean, yeah. they thought, I mean, that Sky thought it was Sam Allison referee in the game, but uh, they changed They it. did, but that's pretty easy to distinguish, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I, think I, I think I'd have spotted that. Yeah, they, they, might, they, might, they might, have, might have spotted without, yeah. without so it. Was, I mean, it was Tommy, 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 Tommy's got his own little way of taking penalties. Yeah, he, he does it. He, he, he stops. He does that little, little yeah. shuffle of the feet. And, uh, yeah. well, it's, it's, a, it's a delay, so he waits for the yeah, keeper to know. see which way he's committing his yeah. weight and, and puts it in the other side. I mean, he always, he, it, it, makes, he's a, it makes perfect sense till he gets it wrong. He's a brilliant penalty taker. I think he's the best yeah. penalty taker I've seen since Jet. And Jet did the Pogba before Pogba, you know, yeah. striding up. Yeah, and just well, um, it a lot in. of power, a lot of power with minimum. Oh yeah, practice. but he just sends a keeper the wrong way. I mean, he's as good yeah. as it's as good as a goal. He's a great yeah. penalty taker. So that's two nil. And he's over to you, Ian. Ian, Ian. <laughs> I mean, that was goal number ten and eleven for Tommy. And I think how many of those are penalties? Is it five or six penalties? Yeah, in that total, certainly five. I think. Anyway, yeah. Tommy did his chances of getting um, a move in the summer. No harm with that brace yeah and you know probably increased his value just by doing that and he could quite easily get another three goals in the last four games of the season if he's given the chance more of that later um i'm just picking up on a comment alan gwinnell made on here and this does relate to tommy because is tommy going to be a player at ashton gate next season probably not yeah and alan uh, is alan gwinnell yeah he said what did I think of their number nine, Gallagher? Thought he had a good game, won everything in the air, always looked for the ball down the channels and powerful. I mean, Gallagher's been around a little bit. Um, 
you know, is he that big lump up? Well, he's not a lump actually. Is he that player up front that we could make do with? I, I mean, Neil's just. I, me I wouldn't say so. I'd have to. I'd have to say we'd be disappointed. I'd be disappointed if we couldn't get better than that. I'd, I mean, I prefer, the, I prefer Duncan the, the best Isaac case, on loan. Best case scenario me. with with Tommy, uh, I think would be if if. If he does what, if he won't sign a new contract, if we could sell him and loan him back, that'd be dead, Andy. But then you have to say, if we bring in a nine, and my understanding is we will bring in a nine, even if Tommy signs. If we if we bring in a nine, um, where does Tommy play? Does he does he play one off him as a ten? He's done that before, uh, and he's done it. Uh, he used to do it. Believe it or not, he played behind Sam Bell as a ten with Sam as a nine. <coughs> in, in academy football um so we we know he could do it um but but yeah going back to mark sykes yeah he he, he has got a habit of going down too too easy and i think scott twine's got a little bit of that in him although with with scott twine it's a little bit uh, sorry uh with twine it's a little bit um clever a little bit like scotty used to do you know when he sticks his bum into the defender and falls over and a referee gives a push that type of thing with with sites it can be a bit more a, a bit too obvious a bit blatant so um okay. but yeah i mean it oh stonewall penalty for the for the second goal for sure yeah. okay so half time comes neil and uh we're enjoying our bovril yeah to, uh, I saw that little clip <laughs> of uh, Grealish going on. About, I, I didn't have Bob Rule, but I just oh, I mentioned Grealish saying that's what he remembers about playing against us last season. But to uh, start the second half, old Downsy had his work cut out, four substitutions to call out. I think he managed to get it just about right. But do you think words were had in the dressing room at half time? I think he lost his proverbial, I, th I think, at the end of the day. But, I mean, I, I didn't get the substitutions. Mm. I mean, the second half, which we're obviously get into, for 20 minutes, nothing happened, did it? Mm. I had a look at the stats and it was like, no corners, no shots, no nothing. There was two teams to sort of, they were trying to find a way. They had more of the possession. They had something like about 67, 70% of the possession, but not really hurting us in any way. And, and you're talking about the start of the second half. Start of the second yeah. half. For 20 minutes, nothing happened. No, nothing. I mean, we did... did really. We did what we seem to do a lot under Manning is just almost like bore the other team because we just sit and they didn't threaten. But then I thought, I thought to myself, I was sitting there and I was watching. I thought, oh, God, there's not really that much happening at all in this game. And I had a look at the stats and all the rest of it and thought, this is this is bizarre. But then I thought, you know what, we're two nil up. Yeah, and it's why, like, why, and, and we got like, a game get... and we're playing on a Wednesday, not a Tuesday. So and why it's... bust our gut? To, to is for them to come at us yeah. to actually create. It's not for us. We're two nil and, up. And let's just play. And the closest the game, they came, the closest they came was that shot of Smollett just after the substitutions when he just drove the ball wide. Where Roberts did exceptionally well, I thought, to get across and actually yeah. force him wide on it. Yeah. But I had a look at the substitutions at half time, and there were just some bizarre ones. I mean, taking off Dolan and bringing on McFazian, he he went he went five at the back. Um, and it was just like, was he thinking now I just need some sort of damage limitation or something? I, I yeah. don't know, really. I mean, he didn't sort of chase the game with those substitutions. He took off, you know, they're attacking the threats. He took off uh, McCarde and then bought on Buckley, and then he took off Dolan and bought on another centre-back. And it was, I it mean, was I have to say, bizarre, really. I have to say Moran, to... Moran, wasn't it? It's look, it he looks about 10. Yeah, but their their team, Blackburn, you always because uh, they're Barrett and Diaz and they, but they were, you know, not. not well, I didn't recognise hardly any of the names in there. Well, we had a look last night. Thomas and I, and Thomas will be back at, on the pod on on Saturday. He's just working this week. But the we had a look last night. Smodics has got twenty four goals, top scorer in the division. The next highest scorer is is Dolan with five. Yeah. So if they're not a one, <laughs> one trick pony, a one trick right. pony, if Smodix isn't scoring for them, basically they're not scoring. Yeah. What did you think of Sam Smodix last night, Mark? I mean, you know, he was the player that was club in the bag, never given a fair crack of the whip down here. Yeah. I mean, I I, I was remember I tried to remember back to when he was here. I mean, he was only here for four months because. Uh, mm -hmm. It was here, but it's from August to August 2019 to January 2020, and we loaned him to to, to Peterborough then, and he was gone, wasn't he? Loaned loaned yeah. to a permanent move, but he was. He, I mean, he was play, supposed to be playing in a free behind uh, Sam Gallagher, and he was dropping deeper and deeper. 
so badly that I think the second half he fouled he fouled George Tanner and he was almost in the uh, lower lands down. He just disappeared off the pitch. Mm. So I mean, he was really you know he was he, he got the one good ball that they played through from that Moran uh, through through our defence uh, that um, Roberts sent him down the side and he could only he, he couldn't get his foot round the ball. I think uh, I think he's right footed and he got his left foot to it and missed mm. the goal completely. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it, they, yeah, they are a one-man team in the defence, second worst in the division. Yeah, um, yeah poor, yeah. poor goal scoring as well. But just, go, just very quickly about a player I, I'd like that we could could be on our radar, and he's at a favourite Norwich is Adam Ida, who's on loan at Celtic, been coming on his sub. I think he scored. I don't know if he scored. Came on against uh, Rangers on Saturday. Powerful in the air. Not bad with his back to goal, as we've seen at Ashton Gate to our detriment because he scored in the last minute, didn't he? For them. Um, 23 years old. He's he's still got some potential. Maybe uh, that would be worth a bit. I don't know, but uh, he's not a, a bad championship player that we that could be uh, in our price range. So okay, that's somebody to keep an eye on. Ian, start the second half. We said from 46 to 70 minutes. You know, we 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 it was it was incumbent upon Blackburn to take the game forward, and you know they're one of uh, eight clubs in that separated by four points at the bottom they're in severe danger of going down if they put in a couple more performances like that yeah um but the substitutions when they came they were well timed and they made the difference uh Sykes Twine and Conway going off Cornick Mametti and Wells coming on yeah the timing and you know a two nil timing not, sorry, timing I did not the time to bring on Mabude a two nil no I mean, t- timing, I'd have done it 10 minutes earlier, yeah. uh, but that's being picky. Um, they were, it, it, if that was absolutely the epitome of perfect substitutions mm. because they couldn't have been any more involved. Naki scored two goals, uh, Mametti scored a goal, and Cornick got an assist. Mm. So what's not to like? Um, so I, I was... Uh, yeah, very, very pleased with that. And it just goes to show what a difference it makes when you've got a stronger bench. Because there were people that came on and that could affect the game, that did affect the game. And that you can't really ask for any more. In terms of the pressure Blackburn puts under, the only I was slightly concerned they might do us from a corner because their corners were coming in they had uh, a with a bit of bench. Didn't they? they had about three with, in a row, yeah. Well, with a, they were coming in with a bit of venom, and I mean, when you you look at a crowd scene in our penalty area, it really is a bit like Land of the Giants, isn't it? But in fairness, touching wood, we tend to defend them pretty well. If you saw Norwich the other night, uh, they were two 0 up at Sheffield Wednesday. By all accounts, cruising, dropped off, let Sheffield Wednesday come at them, force some corners two big loopy in swinging corners and they've got a load of monsters in the penalty area and they score two headers in the last 10 minutes yeah to to get themselves a point uh we we can't do that particularly with rob dickey injured but we, we have got a small team however you look at it and but other teams seem to have a large selection of these monsters. They start with two or three, and they've got another three or four on the bench. Um, so we that was the only time I was slightly concerned, and I thought it 2-0, if they get one back, it's going to be squeaky bum time. Of course. So, so, so but right. they, they didn't. Um, and the timing of the substitutions, like I say, I'd have done it 10 minutes earlier, but fair play, got it spot on got the players spot on and it's there's not that many teams in the division who can even the top ones who can completely change their forward line and yeah, look every bit is good about, if not better having a week we talk about having a weak squad because it, it, looking at the in, the injured players there um you know you put Dickie three in, three center halves Dave yeah well Nate Smith I don't think he's a center half but Atkinson, well he does yeah well uh, yeah he does and he's the man he, he was in the player uh, Championship, championship team, team two was, years ago, yeah, as a centre back. Though. All right, as a centre back. All yeah. right, but those three, you know, I mean, well, looking at how they played last night, you know, how many of those would be definite starters? You know, there's competition for places. Mm. As we say, we cannot cope with. Well, we have to address the fact that there's always going to be injuries, as Ian's rightly said. Let's get on to goal number three. I thought goal number three 
was the best of the evening because it started well robert set it up but the pressure the overload down that right on well their right our left with pring was there as well and then robert got the ball to mimeti mm. he's starting to repay the confidence shown in him by liam manning isn't he yeah well i i'll come to the ref here actually mm. i thought the ref was really good last night mm. yeah i thought we had a really good game yeah. last night and that third goal it was an overhit pass and it's our good friend mr hyam again having an absolute stink on his ass wasn't it? on his ass, <laughs> on his ass, ass as the ball came through <laughs> again but other refs the key strouds of this world uh, i think would have given a foul against hyam there i'm giving a, a pen no 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 of, against him oh no Sorry. oh foul on him oh, foul yeah. on him yeah, I do apologize. Did... foul on him benefiting the defender could... benefiting yeah. yeah i think in that situation but yeah i mean as as ina said all of the you know the, the forward line came on three goals and one assist from them and that was you know just when we weren't really going anywhere we, if we kept the same 11 on the pitch i think we would have played out a two now yeah i don't think anything no but those those subs coming on they they gave us the added impetus and all the rest of it that goal the first ball in was over hit mm. And it was high ends every day of the week. Just clear it out. Just clear it out. Mm. And he's looked across, seen Mimetti, thinks, oh, I can do it. And then he's, you know, a bit of touch, fallen on his ass. Mm. And then he almost gave a penalty for a sort of a handball, I think. He mm. almost tried to scramble it with his hand. But a good finish by Anis again. Yeah. It's, good, it's good to see Anis scoring a few goals, actually. The belief in him, really. Yeah. I mean, I think all of us would say he hasn't had the greatest of seasons, Yeah. all in all. But he's finishing strongly. Is, is Eddie? Is Eddie the dog is coming Eddie in? Dog. Uh, Mark, I'll let you talk about the uh, that that uh, goal as well, and also um, McFadden. I mean, when you're bringing on McFadden to boost your defence, his days are well behind us, aren't they? Yes. Well, he, he, he yeah. turned slower than a combine harvester, didn't he? I mean, like Neil said, there's a it's fifty fifty with um, with high and. Uh, Anis is down on the bar, down on the, uh, the 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 the, uh, the 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 goal line. He, he has a bit of a fifty-fifty with him, and then beats him. Good good feet from Anis. Hyams on his ass, but the way he just brushes past McFadden running across him is embarrassing. And in yeah. it in the opposite corner, Pear's got a hand to it, but it was too powerful. Uh, sometimes I wonder if Anis is trying to caress the ball, but I think his shooting is improving. Mm. Uh, a, 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 you know a lot but it was embarrassing how easily he, he got into the area because it's he's lost the ball countless times in that position get just getting into the penalty area on the left side getting yeah. onto his right foot gets tackled or yeah he'll get out four or something like that just brush past two players yeah. Eustace must have thought what have I got myself into and that was that was three yeah. nil and that was two minutes after he came on yeah, and then Ian, five minutes later, well, penalties are becoming like buses for us this season, aren't they? You know, and uh, <laughs> McFasdy, I think Neil said to me before we went live, he looked like he was looking at his uh, time on his I'm watch, the way glad, he, I'm, it was an unnatural I'm glad you, position. It was an unnatural I'm position. I'm glad you, <laughs> you, you came to me on that one, Dave, because my pet hate over recent weeks has been defenders not looking at the ball on set pieces when they're defending all they're doing is grabbing hold of somebody they've got not a clue where the ball is and that was a classic example last night he all he could see was viner so he ran towards viner put his arms out targeted viner but in doing so he swung he swung his arm his right arm backwards yeah and punched the ball yeah. <laughs> then he's got then he's got the the brass neck to look at the referee and go well what's that for yeah. and there's four other blokes with him all saying the same yeah i mean are they, are they blind it, it, he punched them i mean when you see the penalty that was given uh against i think was was it rotherham that played west ham last night uh west brom, west brom. sorry yeah west brom shoe the guy goes like this, right? He's outside the box. The ball misses his arms, hits him in the head, and the ref goes, penalty. And he's five yards outside the he's box. He's five yards outside the box. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How did the referee get that, that wrong? 
I don't know. Well, well he, he did. did. He well, did. Well, I mean, no, it's, when you, it's when you see something like but, that that you really want to have VAR in the championship, isn't it? Yes, oh, you do. Don't and say that, Dave. The problem, don't say the, that. the problem that you've got is this is up this hugging and grabbing. I hate it. I detest it. Like, it's it's like it's, in wrestling. While we're talking well, about it is, and while we're talking about, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to watch it. I really don't. Do not. And it's the same with Chowdhury the other week. That's a stonewall penalty because he's. And it's all right saying, "Well, Dicky had hold of him. He's got no choice." If I walk up to you and put my arms right round you like that, and I'm an inch away from your chest, the first thing you're going to do is go get off, yeah. aren't you? It's obvious. No, I, I think you might just try to be friendly. I don't know. Yeah, I think no, you, you would, Mark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think you're. I think you're highly suspect, Mark. I think I think you uh, you may fold in the witness box under questioning. I think. What about talking about penalties? What about a different game the other night? Arsenal Bayern Munich when Gabriel Jesus picks the ball up in the penalty area. I uh, know Gabriel. Is it? Gabriel. it was Gabriel, the defender. Oh, you got to get, you can't get your Gabriels mixed up, David. Yeah. Well, you you got got for? Why aren't you talking about Naki Wells? Brilliant. Well, I'm coming penalty, on to Dave. That, Mark. I'm you know, that. stroke down the middle, Dave. You know, what's going on? I mean, totally different penalty taking technique to, yeah. to Tommy, wasn't it? You know, bang, straight down the middle. Went in the net, though, didn't it? That's, yeah. that's, doesn't matter. Yeah. Bang, get in the net. That'll do. Mark, um, he brought on Andy King for Joe Williams, got a deserved round of applause when he yeah, came off. Great. And then, you know, you're 4 0 up, 85 minutes. You know, you're going to get 10 minutes with time added on 11, as it turned out to be last night, with 85 on the clock. Jamie Knight the Bell. Came on, another player getting the pathway, getting first team action, another defender. Yeah, he didn't put a foot wrong, you know. Yeah, I mean, a bit, a bit, a bit difficult to judge, you know. If he, he played as a wing back from a Crawley who, who faded badly in in the second half, you got to expect that um, after his uh, after his injury, as we as we know. So yeah, he, he did okay. He did, you know, it wasn't really a lot to see. Uh, but can we talk about the final goal now? Go on then. Yeah, stick with you, Mark. So, uh, I mean, Roberts pass out of defence. Terrific. So, he plays it from the, from the left side uh, to right to Cornick. Cornick exchanges uh, passes uh, with um, Naki Wells on the edge of the area. Then he plays it across the box for the coup de grace. Tap in at the far post. 5-0. And uh, there's all the paramedics are going around with smelling salts, people fainting everywhere. Manning must stay T-shirts being printed at the printers. You know, it's you know, it's, a, it's so much to see. Fans are staying in droves. Oh, yeah. it's, it's carnage out there, Dave. Five nil. No, I was What's still there. On? Actually, you know, I said, I said, I'm going to go when there's plus four minutes on the clock, and then I was still sitting there, and then we got that. That fifth goal, so I saw all five. You were of them. transfixed, Dave, weren't you? I was running back. So I have to say, you would be dazzled. You would be dazzled I, I by City's say, play, weren't you? I'm, I was not, not impressed. Being... Just park. I did my parking app last night, and you know, if you've ever parked on those flats down by where the bus route is, yeah, you know, where the old ten pin bowling used to be, right? The picture to park there, you know, and I won't give away the number it was, but I ended up parking on a grass verge and uh, took a picture. I'm going to ask for my nine pounds and. Four pence. I thought you'd depart relying. I thought you'd depart you relying by Nelson Mandela just, out. There. Just going, just going back to the back to the game. The the what I really liked about that fifth goal was it, it actually went to Naki Wells, not Cornick, and he showed great control and then laid it off to Cornick. Mm -hmm. And and I thought that was, you know, that that shows that you don't have to be eight foot tall to to be a target. But yeah. the pass needs to be accurate and well struck rather than just booted. So, and I think that's another advantage that Roberts gives you if you're playing out from the back. And I agree with Neil completely that he's a, he's obviously better in a, a three than a four. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, I'm conscious of uh, time today. It's a bit of a short one because some of them have got jobs to, jobs to do uh, or working today. Mark and myself have got a busy morning. Lined up. Um, Huddersfield at home. Uh, Neil, I'll come to each of you just to finish. Uh, start with Neil, then you, Ian, then you, Mark. But Neil, Huddersfield at home. Um, they're they're battling away down there. I think they got beat at Preston the other night, four one, when they That's, were chasing yeah. night before last, chasing the game. They've had an extra day. Yeah. Different proposition to Blackburn. Everybody said at least Blackburn tried to play football and took the game to us. They didn't sit in at all. Um, who, who's manager of Huddersfield? How do you think they're going to play? 
That's a good question. question. I don't know, do you? No. That's why I asked. I don't know. Any, I don't know. Anybody they, know? They, they've got an interim at the moment. Off they've got rid of Mark. Oh, no, I know they've been they've been through a few up there, haven't they? But what do you expect um, on Saturday, Neil, against the Terriers? What I'm what, after last night, when I thought Blackburn, I thought that was going to be a tight game. So there we go. I've, I've seen the highlights of their game against Preston. Mm. They folded as soon as Preston got on top. So I think their confidence is going to be a bit fragile. If we get ahead, if we apply ourselves, put that press in again, then I think we'll come out winners and quite comfortable winners. But can we if, do the if, real if, thing? If they come, two two if, wins in. If if they've got any sense, they will sit deep and invite us on and deny us the space in behind, which is what Blackburn didn't do. If they've got any sense, but they might come there thinking we need a win. And we we need to be progressive, and we need to go out, and that'll play into our hands. Yeah. So I don't know that realistically the way Huddersfield. I mean, they're not very good. No, we know that. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> let's let's see what Saturday brings. But I think if we get ahead in the game and they have to come out, then I think it's a it's a win for us. Yeah, Mark, would you agree? Similar. Yeah, their manager is a guy called Andre Brightonwriter. Uh, oh, he's course. previously been Honestly. a manager. I mean, he, he just rolls off the tongue. He managed Schalke uh, <laughs> eight years ago. So he comes from the Bundesliga. They got him after they curtailed uh, Neil Warnock's uh, brief manager shit there, didn't they? And Darren uh, Moore. And, and Darren Moore. Oh, yeah, they've had three managers this yeah. season. Yeah, they're t- turned into Watford, aren't they? Manage, yeah. You know, change manager like they're underwear. <laughs> I'm just looking yeah, at they, they got, I just feel they've got to get the win. I mean, it was crazy that game the other night against Preston because uh, that Osmajit scored a scored a hat-trick in eight minutes. It was one all mm. with six minutes to go. Mm. And he scored in the 84th, 87th and 90, 92nd minute. Mm. So, you know, they just fell away. But I think they'll be better than Blackburn. Uh, whether they'll, I think that they might, you know, I think they might play more pragmatic. I expect they play more pragmatically than than uh, than uh, Blackburn did because it is so close. Um, I well, mean, I'm just Blackburn, looking at the table now, Mark. You know, from QPR in 16th with the goal difference of minus four. Well, Blackburn have got Leeds, Coventry, and Leicester in their last four. Well, uh, you know, maybe well Blackburn have got four plus Birmingham. I'd love them to go down. I don't care all. who I don't care who goes down as long as Birmingham do. So yeah. I'm, I'm not going to put. Well, they lost to Cardiff, which was a bit frustrating. I want us to get. I'd love us to get nine points. I think we can get nine points from the last twelve. Because I think we might just get narrowly beaten at Norwich, but it'd be a minimum of seven. So minimum of seven, but I think we should get nine. Yeah. Out of our last four, well, so one would hope. you know, 66 one would points. One would hope. One would hope. Why not? Why not be positive? Yeah, yeah. Ian, um, Saturday against Huddersfield, you know, it would be nice to uh, get that 60 point total for the first time in uh, four or five seasons, five seasons maybe. Uh, perfect platform to do it and to go to Norwich the following Saturday with freedom. I mean, Norwich still have to look over their shoulders to consolidate and get that sixth position, but. Uh, are you agreeing with the rest of us that it should be three points, but in this division, you can never count on anything, can you? In exactly that, Dave. In this division, you can't tell. One thing that we have done, we're, we're hitting some milestones. We've now won 10 home games this season. The average for the lap since we've been promoted is eight, and the highest number since we've been back up in the championship, since cultural brought us up, is 11. Mm. So that's something that, that we could better if we win our last two home games. And on paper, you're right, they're winnable. As things things are going, um, over the season at home, we're the ninth best team in the division. Uh, away, we're the 13th. Um, and as we alluded to earlier, we've, we've still got the fourth best defensive record. But unfortunately, to Neil's point, the 16th yeah. best attacking record. So you yeah. don't need to be Pep Guardiola to work out where the issue is. Um, yeah. And that, that issue is being addressed. Um, we, My understanding is is we, we've got the targets. Um, it, they are realistic, but it's a question of whether we can get them. And there's lots of slips between cup and lip that way. So... Um, that, that's a that's a target I'd like to like to see us achieve. We've now won more home games than we have in the last four seasons. Yeah. Uh, sorry, more okay. more games in total. Oh, match win sixteen. Yeah, that's the first. Yeah, time. sixteen. So it's been fifteen for the last three years. 
the three seasons. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, it's uh, we've got an opportunity. I want to see the performances, same as everybody else. I want to see the performances. And we've got to try and bring in that level of consistency and providing we can keep a reasonable level of fitness through to the end of the season. I don't see any reason why we shouldn't do it. And the pressure, the pressure is completely off. You've only got to look at the sides below us, you know, and and there's some big old clubs. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, No, no, we're doing stuff. I mean, this season. So I think we're doing better than could reasonably be expected. And I hope we continue to do that over the last, was it, last three games now? Well, hopefully. And if you look at those, uh, the, well, last four games, if you look at those games, the three four games, the, uh, is it three? No, two at home, two away, isn't it? Yeah. Three the nights. two at home, yeah. you know, we want more performances like that. that will boost season ticket sales. Because when you come away from a 5 0 win, you forget about some of the rubbish you've seen beforehand and everything, everything's looking good. But look, it's time for uh, us to end the podcast. Thanks to the 200. 50 or so of you that have been watching this uh, live. Thanks to everybody who listens to us on various podcast platforms. We'll be recording the Huddersfield podcast uh, at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning, so join us for that one. But in the meantime, all that remains to be said is, come on, you Reds! Goodbye, everybody. All the best. Bye-bye. Cheers, all.